Welcome back everybody. Now that deer and pheasant season is over, I'm going to be getting back into the reloading room and working on some more guns. In particular today we're going to be working on the 6mm again. I've seen a few other videos from I think two guys at least that have said that they've had issues with uh, bullet seating being compromised when chambering around into a 6 arc AR. Um, specifically that the bullets are jumping forward. So that's what we're going to test today. In the other videos everybody was using 105s and 109s, um, 108s, you know heavier bullets. So I'm going to test some of those, some factory loads and some hand loads, but I'm also going to test uh, 87 VMAX and the 75 VMAX and see if they slip through the gun. So let's take a look at what we have going. So what I've done here is loaded up three rounds in empty cases of 75 grain VMAX, 87 grain VMAX, and 108 ELDMs. Now these are just empty cases, no powder, no primer, just bullets seated in them. Over here though, I do have the 103 uh, ELDX and the 105 Hornaday Black boat tail hollow points. Those are factory ammunition that we're going to cycle through the gun. I've already measured and marked for each one of them, one, two, and three, and measured the distance using the Hornaday gauge there on the steric caliper. So I've already got all those marked down per. If you do notice, the hand loads are definitely a little bit more consistent than the factory loads already. But we'll load them up in some magazines and cycle them through the gun here and see how far they move. So I've got all the dummy rounds loaded up in the mag here. Let's go ahead and cycle them through. Put the brass catcher on. I figured it might uh, might throw off the readings just a little bit if I just flicked them out onto the concrete floor. So let's just start. There we go. There's those. Now, for the loaded ammunition, I'm going to go ahead and take that outside. I don't want to risk accidentally, you know, punching one into the concrete wall here. So, we'll run this outside and I'll be right back. Alright, let's drop these out of here now. Live rounds. Now, well, let's go back and measure them all. Okay, let's measure some of these up here. Let's grab some of these 105s. The initial was 2.805. And, and gained about a thousandth on the first one. There's number two. This one was 806. Now, we got about 807, so another thousandth, this here, gained about two thousandth off that one, let's try these hand load 108s, what do we gain on them? See here, number one was 2.797, so that one's the same. Number two, uh, that one gained a thousandth. Number three. 
about a half a thousandth. The other factory ammo. Number three was 2.815, which that's what it is now, so that one didn't move. Number two was 2.812, and looks like that one gained a thousandth. One was 2.814 yeah it looks like gained just a little bit so those actually didn't do too bad through my gun let's try these 87s here let's see what was that one number one was 2.710 yep, exactly the same number two was 2.708 which yep, exactly the same we got number three and 2.709 and that's been it there we go exactly the same so it didn't move at all This one was 2.736, and yeah, it might have moved half a thousandth, maybe. guess I don't quite remember if that one was a little heavy on the line or not. Let's see here, number two, also 2.736. That actually got set back a thousandth. And number three should be 0.735, which, yep, same thing. So, those small ones really did not move, and one actually got set back just a little bit. Now, I had done this with other factory rounds, and I'd seen anywhere up to a 5,000th jump. But, um... I mean, this is all trying to help with the fact that you get, oh, three, four rounds to go together, and then you get a flyer or two in there. So this bullet seating, I'm going to write all these down and get the difference of how much they moved. But, I mean, you could definitely see where, you know, if this becomes 2.810 you know, and this one stayed at 2.805, I mean, if you got five thousandths difference in there i mean you could see a little bit of seating depth you know movement in there as far as group size goes but is it going to be enough to actually change that group and really you know give you a substantial flyer i guess i don't know but let me get all these written down here hopefully you can read all this here um 75s one of them, I'm going to give that a negative one. It was probably actually a half of a thousand that it got set back, but I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt, and we're going to give it the full negative one. On the 87s, we had nothing. Two of the 103s jumped a thousandth. So again, on those, when you've got, you know, already have a spread of three thousandths from the factory setting, and then add in a variable in there you're getting a little bit wider on the 108s on my uh, reload dummy rounds only one of them moved a thousandth on the 105 factory rounds of course the one that was the shortest stayed the same and didn't move next one up moved a thousandth and the longest one moved two thousandths now it was on the 105s and I only had one box of the 108s and those had moved the one when I checked them initially I did have one round that moved five thousandths but I do have a Lee factory crimp die here for the six arc so I went ahead loaded up another three of the 108s 
and uh, all of them measured the exact same length. We're going to run them through the crimp die here. Now, in the instructions, it tells you to, you know, run the ram, the shell holder, all the way up, screw it down until it touches, and then give it a half a turn. I'll tell you, with a bullet that doesn't have a factory cantaloupe on there, see if I can find it. I made an example here that it will crush that bullet. This one right here, I don't know if you can see that or not, if it'll focus in on my hand. But you can see where that thing is tipped in right there on the lip of that case. You can go ahead and distort these bullets if you turn this very far. I probably have this thing set so that it's only maybe a quarter of a turn, maybe a little bit less engagement, so that it's just barely snugging those down. So let's run those through the gun, see what happens. All right, just ran these through the gun. Let's take a look at that and Yep, 0.2797. Yep, same thing. And, yep, same thing. So, with the factory crimp die, those did not move. So the results on this test didn't vary too badly through my gun. I mean, I could see where on these 6mm bullets, I mean, any of them with 100 grains or more, you are getting a fairly long projectile, and the case neck on here isn't a whole lot to grab onto that. So that being said, I mean, this is just through my rifle. I did custom build it. Um, other big name manufacturers or what you might put together may vary. Um, so your results might vary from mine. I mean, everything from, um, you know, what barrel and feed ramp angle are they using, how polished is it, stuff like that can change it. Uh, the bolt carrier group is a lightweight, a standard weight, heavier weight bolt carrier group. You combine that with a heavier buffer. I mean, mine's got a standard buffer weight. Um, right now, it's got the standard buffer spring in it. Um, you know, if you up that, that's creating more energy. So when it slams that that bullet into battery in the chamber, I mean, all that energy's got to go somewhere. And when it comes forward, it could hit that hard and make it slip even further. So um, even things like uh, what brass, I mean... I couldn't find any brand new brass, so I had to end up purchasing loaded ammunition and now shooting it, and now I'm reloading that brass. You know, it's all Hornady stuff, um, even brand to brand. I mean, or whether you did you get Starline brass and neck it down from 6.5 Grendel to 6 Arc? Um, is it Lopwood brass? I mean, you would think that. You know, brass is brass, but it's not. Um, the metallurgical makeup of it from one company to another is different. Some are a little harder, some are a little softer, and that's going to change with, you know, work hardening of it, sizing it, I mean, and how much grip it's actually going to have on that projectile. So sometimes the devil's in the details on this stuff. You just got to test it, find out. Some of these little things can add up to bigger things later down the road, and we can compensate for that, and that's how we make accuracy. If you've stuck with me this far through the video, I'd like to thank you, because I know that this is not the most interesting topic in the world, but it does need tested. In the next videos coming up, I'm going to do a little bit more on the load development side of things. Um, first, I'm going to do these... 75 and 87 grain v max is probably with some h4895 here 
um, maybe into my 308. I got a brand new set of cases for that, but it's all kind of going to be weather depending. We've had some real weather fluctuations here, so we'll see what I can get done. I'll do as much as I can, try to get some more videos out. I tried previously to make a video for you on load development using my uh, new custom 223 Ackley Improved, but unfortunately that video failed. Um, the SDs were there on that gun, but no matter what bullet and powder I was using, uh, it just does not shoot well. It's three quarters and up none of it's repeatable so that video got scrapped hopefully the next ones here that i do on the six arc and the 308 um be able to show that a little bit better um you know when you get single digit sds you would assume we should be getting some good groups but that poor thing just wasn't making it so i'm gonna have to order a new barrel for that thing get it rechambered again and uh that'll probably be another video for another day so, thanks for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. I'll see you on the next one.